It's about time you showed up. Hey, Amen. She don't go here to our, ch to our church. That and then the pink cats, I'll pray for her. She'll die. get in the will of God. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't mean that. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Well, come on, Brother Kevin. Give us something right quick. Take us up to lunchtime here. They got lasagna today, y'all. And uh, uh, so you're going to enjoy it. Wasn't that good yesterday? That chicken casserole and rice, gravy. Mm. Hey, man, I want to, we might have liver mush before it's over with. Like some of our people, come. if you don't come from around here, you don't eat liver mush. And it's, that's how come your part of the country is so wicked, probably. That's part of it. Um, everybody says, well, what's it made out of? We don't know. We don't want to know. That's right. But it's good. And, uh, hey, man, everybody around here, my girls, two of them's right back there. They, they, take, they just soon take Little must sandwich to school as steak when they was in high school. In school, they took it all the time, and uh, they used to take it. I don't take a liver must sandwich. It's good. It's really pig, whatever they don't sell. That's what it is. Tongue, lips, eyeball. And uh, man, I, well, they do something to it. That's part of meat too. Same thing. It's just made a little bit. But anyway, appreciate brother Kevin and. Uh, the work that he's doing down there in Mooresville. Brother Smokey up there in Maryland. God's got us salt. Salt, like she shakes salt. All your salt don't go to the same place. Yeah. He spread it out on your foot, and that's the way the Lord's got his preaching. Yeah. Uh, to keep it from rotting yeah. in the world. And we have a youth rally up there, Brother Smokey's, every year. We had one. How many did we have saved this year, Brother? When I was a four or five? Three. Three. It was yeah. good. It was good. It was good. Big old boys got saved. Big old teenage boys. And uh, thank God for that. All right, Brother Kevin. All right, Song of Solomon this morning. Song of Solomon, chapter number one. I'm going to read one verse, verse number six. Give it to everybody stand while we read that. Let you stretch for a second. Our bus conference coming up on the 7th yeah, uh, of November. Uh, so be praying about that and come if you can. If you've got to. You preachers got a bus ministry and want to want to be part of that. Uh, we'd be glad to have you. Uh, yeah. Brother Sean yeah. Tan uh, preaches uh, the afternoon service at four o'clock, and then uh, we have barbecue at five, and uh, evening service starts at six. Uh, so come looking to get a blessing from the Lord. That's what's all about to encourage the bus workers, and God always shows up and helps us. And we're looking forward to do that again this year. Verse number six says, "Look not upon me, because I am black." Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me and made me the keeper of the vineyards. But mine <coughs> own vineyard have I not kept. Let's go to the Lord in word prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for your blessing. Yes. Lord, I pray God right now you'd work these next few weeks. Yes, Help Lord. us. Yes, uh, encourage us. Rebuke us. Uh, whatever it is that we need this morning, Lord, that we yes, might be Lord. more like Christ. Uh, that we might get what we need to take from this yes, place this morning. Yes. We might better serve you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Hey, be seated. Uh, what I want to preach on this morning just for a minute uh, is what's keeping you from your own vineyard? What's keeping you from your own vineyard? Yes. Let me say it real quick. Uh, every one of us have our own vineyard, whether you realize yes. it or That's not. Right, uh, you, have a, you have a work that God has given you to Amen. do. Amen. I don't care if you're a man, I don't care if you're a woman, I don't care if you're a child. Yeah. If you're saved this morning, right, then yeah. God has something yeah. for you to do. That's right, but if you've yeah. been born again, Praise and God didn't take you to heaven yet, it's because you're still right. here because you've got a work to do. Yeah. Amen. That's right, Amen. I mean, if you're still breathing, then God's not done with you. <laughs> That's right, and so That's right, what's That's keeping right. you from working in your yeah. own vineyard? Yeah. Right. You have a work to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes, and he's worthy of you doing the work he called you to do. Yes, he is. Right. Now, uh, you know, you think a lot of times, well, uh, preachers have a work to do. And maybe you might even look at maybe a Sunday school teacher yeah. or a, a bus worker or, uh, you know, uh, maybe even singers. You know, they have they have something God gave. Well, God gave you something to do. That's right. I, I don't care who you are. That's if you're right. saved, you have yeah. a work to Amen. do for the Lord. That's you have right. a vineyard. You're supposed to be working in this yeah, world. Right, you have yeah. a vineyard you're supposed to be working in. Now, uh, you know, if you're saved, there's uh, a lot of times people, uh, young preachers especially, 
They try to figure out what the will of God is yeah, in their life. Uh -huh, yeah. I'm going to tell you the best way for you to find out what the will of God for your individual life is. Yeah. There are several things that you ought to be doing that you know, the things you know are the will of God for your life. If you'll yeah. do them, God will reveal to you uh, what right. your special calling, Amen. what your special yeah. work yeah. is. Yeah. If Amen. he's got, I mean, all of us have something. Amen. That's right. But there's several things, and that's part of what, that's what your vineyard is. Yeah. If you want to know what God's will for your particular life, you know what you need to do? First of all, you need, you need, you need to be faithful to the house of God. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. You're supposed to be in church. Amen. You're right. supposed yeah. to be in church. Right. If you, you're supposed to be in church, you're supposed to read your Bible. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You read your Bible, uh, yeah. and you, you be a witness, yeah. and you tithe. Yeah, you right do right. those things, yeah. you do those things, you'll find that that's, that's God's will for every yeah. individual Christian. That's right. And yeah. wherever God has you in life, that's your yeah. vineyard. Amen. That's your vineyard. Let me yeah. tell you what part of your vineyard. Part of your vineyard is your family. Yeah. Your family. That's the hardest part of your vineyard it is yeah. to work in. Amen. You know that? Yeah. That's right. Usually. Because they know you the best. Yeah. They watch you the longest. That's right, brother. That, I mean, they remember how you yeah. were before you got saved. Yeah, they think, good. well, he'll get over this or she'll yeah. get over that. And they're just going through a phase. Or yeah. uh, I know that's crazy the whole time, you yeah. know. And they'll look for every little nitpicking thing they can find. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to ridicule you or find out what's wrong. And I know that wasn't real. I know that's yeah. something. They'll hunt something. Yeah. But they're part of your vineyard. That's right. And you need to work in your vineyard. Yeah. You need to be a witness. Amen. You need to be faithful to God in the house of God. Yeah. You need to have a good testimony. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And if, you, if, you're in, if you're still in school, that's part of your vineyard. That's where God has you right now. That's yeah. where you're supposed to be working. Yeah. If you work in a public job like I do, you that's part of your vineyard. Right. That's, that's where you need to be working at. Yeah. Yeah. There's people there. Uh, there's people there that you can love on. There's people there you can witness to. Right. There's people there you can yeah. encourage. That's yeah. part of your vineyard. You need Amen. to be working in yeah. your vineyard. Yeah. That's yeah. where God has you right yeah. now. That's right, I mean, we're always looking for some big glamorous something to yeah. do. But Christian, I mean, it's just right down where the rubber meets the road. Just, right, just right, what right. you do every day where you're at, that's right. your vineyard. Right. And you need to be, in order to take care of a vineyard, you've got to stay at it. That's right. I mean, if you, 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 walk, you, you can tell when somebody, uh, now I'm not real good at, at gardening. I am to a point, but I just don't have time. Yeah. And uh, I, I ain't planning one in years. Uh, this past spring, my dad-in-law, he had to have surgery. He put his garden in. Yeah. He's 88. He planted his garden, you know. And then uh, then he had his, he had hernia surgery. And I had to, for seven weeks, I tried to keep up with it. And I'm an hour and a half away from him one way. And so I'd go up a couple times a week and, and tiller and hoe and all that stuff, you know. Well, after seven weeks, he's back at it. And I was done. Yeah. But uh, it, it, his garden didn't look like it usually does because <laughs> I didn't have time to keep it up. But, uh, but you know, if you're going to keep a, if you're going to keep your vineyard, you got to stay in it all the time. Uh, yeah. uh, you can't let the devil get an edge on you anywhere. You got to stay faithful to that thing. Why? Uh, but this morning, why ain't you working? What's keeping you from your vineyard? Yeah. I'll give you a couple things real quick, and I'll hush because uh, I know y'all hungry. Amen. Uh, first thing, first thing, <clears throat> first thing is uh, that uh, you know if if you find. Let's look back at our scripture just for a second. Now, the the one talking here, she said, uh, "My own vine, my own vineyard, I've not kept." Uh, she said, "But uh, she said that, that that my mother's children were angry with me." She said, "My mother's children were angry. If you try to work your vineyard, there's gonna be some people who don't like it. Do right. you know that? That's right, brother. There's gonna be some people who don't like. It. Uh, especially if you find." Uh, she had found favor, you know. If you if you realize what's going on here, uh, she's she's in love with King Solomon, yeah. uh, and if the, if you find favor with the king, there's gonna be some people don't like it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're gonna, and and that's sometimes, like I've already yeah. said, it's, it's it might be your own brothers and sisters in Christ that yeah. don't like it. Uh, yeah, come on. Sometimes the hardest time you're gonna have. Is going to be with the brethren, That's it. and it yeah. might be it might be the members of your church. It might be it might be your brothers and sisters in Christ. It might be some other preacher, you preachers that don't like you because God's blessing you. Yeah. I mean, really, Go ahead, if you find favor with Wake the up. king, there's going to be somebody. That
that don't like it. That's right. uh, there's another preacher at worse than me, and, and uh, it seems like every time that God does something in my life and blesses me real good, uh, I mean, he, he, he gets jealous, so he don't like it. Now, yeah. if God does something good in his life, he comes in and he's telling me all about it. I've learned over the years, yeah. if, if God blesses me real good, I don't tell him. Because right. <laughs> right. yeah. if I do, I'm going to have a problem out of him sometime in the next few days yeah. after that. Right. Yeah. Uh, her, her, they didn't like it because God, but people, people don't, the Lord said, yeah. the Lord said they're going to hate you. For that's my right. name's sake. Right. Yeah, right. The world ain't going to like you either. No, right? they won't, bro. But you can't let that keep you from working in your vineyard. Amen. That same guy, he got mad at me a while back, and he he come and, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what he was mad about that. I mean, he just mad about something. He's one of these guys that, He'll get mad at his wife and he'll come in and take it out on somebody else, yeah, you know. Right. And it was just my turn that day, I guess. Yeah. And I was sitting there minding my own business at lunchtime and I, I, I was reading my Bible and I was, it was on Wednesday and I was reading over what I was going to preach that night, looking at my notes, you know, and, and writing some stuff down. And, and uh, he come in there and looked at me and just glared at me, you know, and I don't know what his deal was. And I hadn't spoke to him all day and, uh, and hadn't been around him, but he, he looked at me and said, just go ahead and preach. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I will. No matter what you do, I'm going to preach. Yeah. Amen. And that's what you've got to do. It don't matter. It don't matter what somebody else. You've got a vineyard to work in, whether that people like it or not, whether your family likes it or not. I mean, you know, for a time right after I got saved, uh, for about a year, my mother, my mother, I, she didn't like it because I, uh, well, a little while after I got, after I, got called to preach, I guess, whenever I left my home church and started our church, and uh, she thought I went crazy, you know, and she got mad at me over that and some other things, and, and uh, she didn't speak to me for about a year. Yeah. I mean, you know, she'd want to tell me something, she'd, I'd be standing right there, and my daughter would be standing there, she's about seven or eight, you know, whatever, she she said, you tell your daddy so-and-so, you know. And I'd say, I'd say, well, mama, blah, blah, blah. And she said, you tell your daddy. I mean, like I wasn't there, you know. Yeah. But uh, sometimes, sometimes, but you know what I've done anyway? I went right on and read my Bible. I went right on and witnessed. I went right on and preached because I had a vineyard to work in. It didn't matter who liked it. Amen. And God's given you a job to do. You need to be working in your vineyard no matter who likes it. The Lord said that he's going to hate you for his name's sake. He said that he's going to hate you. Uh, the world hated him before, and it's going to hate you. Amen. He right. might as well get used to it. Amen. Yes, brother. Amen. No matter what, no matter who likes it, if you know you're in God's will and you're doing what God told you to do, just do yeah. it. That's right. Work in your vineyard. Amen. Amen. Work in your vineyard. Yes, sir. If you ain't careful, if you ain't careful, you'll come up with some excuses. Now, here's another thing. Uh, look what she said there. Look not upon me because I'm a, I, because I'm black. Yeah. You can come up with any excuse you want to. And I mean, that don't make excuse. That don't make sense not to work in her vineyard, does it? Uh, that's right. right. She's black because she been she she had a tan. Is what it was. She's been out in the sun too long. Yeah. You can come up with any excuse you want to, but yeah. it don't hold water when it comes down. You got that's a job right. to do. Yeah. Yeah. No matter no matter what comes your way, no matter what obstacle comes in your path. God gave you a job to do, yeah. and if he told you to do something, he knew whatever comes in your way, he knew He knew that was there before you did. Yes, yeah, sir, brother. Amen. I mean, right. he knew the problems that you're facing right now that you could use as an excuse not to serve God. He knew they were coming before he told you to do whatever Amen, you do. Amen, That's right. Before he gave you that yeah. vineyard to work in, he yeah. knew there were some rocks out there you was going to have to dig out. Yeah. Before he gave you that vineyard to work in, he knew there's going to be some thorns and thistles come up in. Yeah. Yeah, there ain't, there's no yeah. excuse to keep you, that ought to keep you from working in the vineyard God gave you. That's right, brother. Not Lay one. On, brother. Not one. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, she said, I've been out in the sun too long. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard anybody say, yeah. oh, so and so, man, they've been out in the sun too long. I already hit on that a little bit. Yeah. It, it don't matter if people think you're crazy or not. That's right. You go ahead and do what God told That's you to it. do. Yeah. If God tells you, it don't matter how crazy it seems, if God tells you to do something, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do right. it. Amen. I mean, here our church is, we got, you know, we have six, eight, ten bus kids. And, uh, you know, we have that big bus conference. 
I kind of know something about, I, I could really I'd be a blessing to Brother Daniel. They had, how many did y'all have? 271 this past Sunday. Yeah. I really got something to tell them, ain't I? Yeah. But God, God put that in my heart. Right. Yeah. And we started it in our church. This would be our 10th one, I think. 9th or 10th. We started the first year and we had 90 in that little old building we got. And the next year we had to move over to uh, Shepherd because we expected 150. And the year after that we was expecting 300. We've been at Bright Light ever since. And in Bessemer City we have 350 to 400 every year. Amen. Wow. Hey, Good. I mean, that seems crazy to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't yeah. do that. You've been out in the sun too long. <laughs> Your mind's fried, yeah. son. Yeah. Back when I was at my home church, God laid it on my heart. Uh, I worked with the teenagers there. And some, most of y'all don't know anything about me, but Danny does. I, I was raised Methodist. And I used to get him to come preach in that Methodist church. <laughs> yeah. Had, he'd come preach the three night revival. My preacher, my pastor told me, we, me and him in the Sunday in the Sunday school superintendent, we was talking about how our church needed revival. And he looked at me and said, Well, you seem to know a lot of preachers, get us one. I said, You want me to get us one? And so I started praying and God told I called Brother Danny. I said, God wants you to come preach revival at our church. Yeah. You sure you want me? <laughs> I said, you're the one. My preacher told me to get somebody, and God told me to get you. Yeah. Yeah. He come, and he preached the first night, and this lady, I don't know how I got off on this, but anyway, this lady was sitting, she was on about, about the third row, right on the end, and uh, the first night, Brother Dan, he preached on, uh, I still remember what you preached first night, what, uh, uh, the winter time, out of the book of Job, how, how you know, Christian, how Christian life sometimes, it was a real sweet message, you know, and, yeah. and it was real good, and God moved, and, and somebody called this lady and got her to come. And uh, she'd come the next night, and he preached on why the world hates Christians. And he was up and down the aisle and carrying on and spitting and slobbering. And every time he'd go by that woman, she looked straight forward the whole time. Every time he'd go by her eyes, and would roll yeah. to the side watching her. She never would move and turn around to see where he went. But uh, And he'd come back by and she'd go. But <laughs> I never did see her in that church again after that. But anyhow, but, uh, but God laid on my heart. I was working with them teenagers. And then several of them had got saved, and some of them have got had got right with God. And uh, about the last part of April, first part of May, God started dealing with my heart that it, that summer I should have church every night. And I argued with the Lord. I said, "Lord, that's crazy. <laughs> them kids ain't gonna come out here every night." And the Lord said, "You just tell them you're gonna be here every night." And so finally, I said, "All right, Lord, I'll tell them that they ain't gonna come." Now, we, there's already coming on Sunday night, and there's already coming on Monday night, and there's already coming on Thursday night anyway. But I, I told them I told them a couple weeks before school was out, I said, now, God laid on my heart, we're going to have church every night this summer. So y'all come on out, uh, you know, y'all, and so you know what they've done? They come. Amen. Amen. They come. Thank God. And ended up, we had church every night for over two years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. I ain't talking about this, you know, coming and playing ball. We've done that, but, you know, we, they play ball till about seven, and we'd have church. Yeah. yeah. Wow. On Friday and Saturday night, I'd have two two guest preachers come in. There's three of them surrendered to preach. I'd let all three of them preach about five minutes apiece. Then I'd preach, and I'd have two guest preachers preach, and we'd stay at church till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Then go to Denny's. But anyway, <laughs> that's how I got this figure I got. But anyway, <laughs> I said, Lord, that's crazy. But God blessed it. Amen. And three men surrendered to preach out of that. Yes, sir. And 30 or 40 got saved Amen. out of that. Amen. And all of them left and went to Baptist churches. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't kidding about that. But sometimes it might seem like you've been out in the sun too long. But if God give you that venue to work in it, no matter if everybody yeah. else in the world thinks it's crazy or not. Amen. Amen. Well, that's right. If God told you to do it, yeah. do it. The last thing, real quick, I'll hush. They said that uh, her, my mother's children were angry with me and made me keepers of the vineyard. She was a slave. Yeah. She couldn't yeah. keep her vineyard because she had to keep somebody. If you ain't careful, you'll let yourself become a slave to yeah. things that don't That's matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Things that don't matter. Yeah. It'll keep you from the vineyard that God gave you. That's right, right. You know, one of the you know one of the biggest things we're slave one of the biggest things keeps 
Christians from doing what God told them to do. Somebody hit on sports a while ago. That's one of them. Yeah. But you know where you see that you sit there and flip that little button. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you sat there and watched nothing? And I ain't yeah. talking about watching wicked stuff, yeah. but there's too much wicked stuff on there. But how many times you sit there and watch nothing yeah. for an hour? Yeah. Yeah. And you ain't read your Bible all day. Yeah. 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 We allow ourselves to be a slave yes, sir. Yes, brother. to the Amen. pleasures of this world and keep yes, us right. from our vineyard. Yeah. 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 Whatever God gave you to do, whatever He gave you to do, it's important. Amen. That's right. He what He told you to do. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Years ago, I used to go. I used to go to two two nursing homes every week. Uh, one of them I went for about eleven years, up to ten years. But uh, the one there was a lady from my home church that was there. I don't think I've probably told this here before, but I felt like I could almost tell it this morning. There was a lady. From my home church that was in that nursing home. And I remembered her name from when I was little, but I didn't, I didn't remember what she looked like or who she was exactly. Her husband was a Sunday school superintendent. And a lot of times I hear people talk about her or, or mention her, and I hear them mention their son. And I always wonder why she didn't come to church. But about once a year or something, they'd, she'd come. Uh, but uh, what it was, they had a son who was autistic. And when he died at 52 years old, he had the mind of about maybe a, a less than a year old. I mean, he, he lay in the bed yeah. and, uh, and play with a little squeaky toy or something, you know, make googly noises. And for 52 years, that lady fed him every meal. She changed him just like he yeah. was a, three, uh, a uh, newborn yeah. for 52 years. The last, last two years or so of her life, I got to know her because uh, she got to where she couldn't handle him on her own. Uh, she was in her 70s, late 70s by then, and, and uh, so she had to move to the nursing home so she'd have help with him. And I got to know her that last couple of years of her life, and after he died a year or so before she did, and I told her, I said, you know what? I said, you got a whole lot more rewards waiting on you in heaven and a lot of preachers I know. Uh, yeah. I said, yeah. God gave you a job. Yeah. Yeah. And he was faithful. Yeah, yeah. brother. <laughs> she yeah. worked in her vineyard. Amen. Yes, brother. Until yeah. she took her last breath. <laughs> yes, brother. Hey. What's hey. keeping you from working in yours? That's it. Amen. What's keeping you from yeah. yours? Amen. 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 Let's just bow our head for a word prayer. Lord, I pray that you'd help us take this message to heart. Help every one of us to work where you've got us, where you've placed us. Not try to jump the fence or do somebody else's job or be somebody else, but to be just what you made us, where you made us, doing what you want us to do. Lord, you know, I've got a job to do here. Lord, help me to do my job. God, have mercy on us. Lord, help us to do better. Not to blame nobody if we don't do it. Not to uh, blame somebody else or something else. God, help us to be faithful till we die.